Welcome to this free online training video, which will highlight the major changes associated with the new version for release of Design Builder, incorporating S Band version 5. Our aim in producing this video is to enable you to familiarise yourself with the new features in the software and to update you on the changes associated with the new release of S Band. We've done it this way so that you can update yourself at your own convenience also saving you the time and cost of attending face-to-face -face training and allowing you to review the material more than once should you wish to. For SIBSI assessors requiring evidence of completion of software update training, please contact the Design Builder office and we'll send you an assessment sheet. Design Builder SBAN version 4 has now received DCLG approval and can be used to generate and lodge EPCs in England. Many of the features I'll highlight, such as the geometry tools, will apply to any version of SBEM used in Design Builder version 4. However, some of the new data settings shown are specific to SBEM version 5.2b. A new licensing mechanism has been put in place for version 4, so you'll notice some minor changes to the license dialogues. The Evaluate option will be live when you first download the software. The License option enables you to select the option most relevant to you. When you install a new version of the software and have SBEM selected as the analysis type, Design Builder will automatically check whether that version is approved for the production of EPCs. If you've inadvertently downloaded the wrong version, then you'll see the same approval status warning as I get here when I open a new file. You must tick the confirmation box before proceeding to make sure you understand that you cannot lodge EPCs using this version. The same warning will appear when you run an SBEM calculation. When adding the building, you also now have the option to specify whether to use the current version for EPC production or the version required for completing assessments under the previous version of building regulations. In this particular model, Partel 2010 for assessments in England and Wales. This can also be set in model options. We've added more powerful geometric modelling tools so that you can now produce complex 3D geometry even more easily. Blocks are initially drawn in the same way, except that you don't now specify the wall thickness in drawing options. More on that shortly. I'll start by adding a simple monopitch block. Note the minor change to the appearance of the crosshair cursor to aid alignment with the axes. The new Add Surface tool basically operates in the same way as the Drag Face tool, but you can now edit just parts of a surface, selecting and dragging them inwards or outwards like so. This means that you can now more easily shape blocks and zones in all three dimensions, which can be particularly useful if you need to edit the perimeter of an existing block. The Mirror tool allows you to create a reflection of a block by mirroring it in your chosen axis. Simply select the block, select the mirror tool, define the reflection axis, and then the start point. And with a second click, the block will be mirrored. Looking at the rear of the building, you can see clearly that the block has been mirrored rather than simply cloned. The Boolean geometry tools, which help you combine and join blocks in various ways, have also been strengthened, and there's plenty of information available in the help file to enable you to use these where appropriate. Go into block level and model options, in the block tab, 
the wall thickness option has been removed because wall and other surface thicknesses can now be defined in different ways in V4. I'll explain these new options shortly. Here in the project details tab, under the special considerations header, there's a new lighting energy numerical indicator checkbox, which relates to the use of a different lighting calculation method for part L2A compliance. It will be moved to the lighting tab in the next release. And here under the EPBD recast header, uh, another part L2 requirement is the consideration of alternative energy systems. Moving now to the construction tab, below grade walls, this is where the properties of sections of external wall below ground level must be specified. The external walls option relates only to walls with no ground adjacency. As noted earlier, the block wall thickness is no longer defined when the block is created. I'll now explain how the new surface thickness options work when modelling an SBEM. This is one of the major changes which you need to fully understand to ensure that you obtain the correct zone volumes and floor areas. There's now flexibility in the way that construction thicknesses are defined here within the geometry, areas and volumes header. This affects how zone volumes and areas are calculated but as in previous versions, has no effect on the thermal performance of the surface. Performance data is still defined in the individual construction edit dialogues as before. There are three geometry convention templates which allow you to define the zone geometry using either internal or external volumes derived from internal or external measurements. The template is only a simple way of loading the correct data into the input options below. The default zone geometry and surface areas, volume and floor area calculation method settings will be made according to the convention template selected. SBEM always requires the inner volume to be used in the calculation, so the two correct geometry template conventions to use for SBEM modelling are either the pre-V4 mode or the internal measurements option. The default geometry convention template setting should always be retained for SBEM modelling, whether you choose to use the pre-V4 mode or internal measurements convection. Setting the pre-V4 mode option means that the model can be created as it was in version 3 and earlier, by specifying the outer perimeter of the building so that the wall thickness is included in the perimeter dimensions. Note the inner volume settings used here and the use of a fixed surface thickness for walls below. That wall thickness is then subtracted to derive the correct zone geometry for the SBEM calculation. Pre-V4 SBEM models imported will use the pre-V4 mode convention by default, but this can be changed if required. Another significant advantage of this new feature is that you're now able to vary the surface thickness at any level. So, for example, you could have different wall thicknesses set for different walls in the same zone or block. Simply navigate to the required surface and change the thickness under the fixed surface thickness header. The wireframe diagram at block and zone levels shows both the inner and outer volumes with the pre-V4 mode template selected. If I add a partition to this block and then go to plan view, you'll see that the partition wall extends visually to the outer perimeter. This does not indicate reality as the partition wall actually stops at the inner face of the external wall. The partition is actually only a representation showing the line separating the two zones and it has no thermal bridging effect on the wall. Note also that the partition tool works automatically in both different height sections. You can now add a grid to the geometry 
and this enables you to snap the cursor to define points on the grid. Going back to the geometry convention templates in the construction tab, probably the simplest method, depending of course on the availability of data, is to use the internal measurements convention. As you can see, this convention sets the areas and volume inputs to the inner volume and sets all surface thicknesses to zero. You simply then enter the internal measurements as used to derive the gross internal or total useful floor area. This is the same method used by ISBEM. The wireframe diagram at block and zone levels shows only the inner volume with the internal measurements template selected. Providing you use either the pre v4 mode with external measurements or the internal measurements convention with internal measurements and retain the correct default settings such as the correct surface thicknesses switched on or off your floor areas will comply with the NCM requirements whichever method you choose. There are new options for shading devices on the openings tab which implement new SBEM inputs. The options are self-explanatory. The shading transmission factor needs to be calculated in the normal way following the guidance in the ISBEM user guide. The breeze soleil option is ticked if the shading device defined in the details above is of the breeze soleil type. In the lighting tab, a constant illuminance control has been added to enable modeling of the effects of dimmer switches. On selecting this option, simply specify the parasitic power consumption of the dimmer switch. The way we define PV systems is another fairly major change in version 4. In V3 and earlier, PV panels were defined by text input in the same way that wind turbines continue to be here on the HVAC tab at building level. In V4, PV panels are added by drawing them onto relevant surfaces in the model. Multiple PVs of different size and orientation can be defined. PV panels can be specified either as a component drawn to size with inclination and orientation taken from model geometry, or by using an arbitrary panel and defining it with the kilowatt peak input data. A panel can be drawn on any external surface in the model at building level, including on ground and adiabatic blocks, if you wish to model panels which are not building mounted. Select the Draw Solar Collector tool and simply add the panel to the relevant building surface in the normal way. If you intend to specify the PV system using the kilowatt peak method, which I'll show shortly, you don't need to worry about the panel size as the output will be taken from the data input. However, we would advise that panels are drawn to the correct size in case the data input method changes later. I'll now add a 7 meter by 4 meter panel from the roof centre. Panels which are not building mounted can be added to ground or adiabatic component blocks or drawn onto ground level and repositioned appropriately. Here I'll add an arbitrary panel and then rotate the panel 45 degrees. Once drawn, the solar collector appears as a component here in the navigation panel. It's not a property of the surface on which it's drawn. The panel can be selected in the normal way and its details edited in the construction tab. The panel must be switched on to be included in the calculation and the multiplier can be used when one large panel is drawn to represent multiple panels. If the specify area and 
PV type option is selected, then the collector area, orientation and inclination are derived from the geometry. See here that our 7 by 4 metre panel automatically assumes an area of 28 square metres, with the orientation and inclination also set as it's drawn. This information can be overridden below if required. SBEM version 5 also now requires additional information on the panel type, the shading and the ventilation strategy which can all be set here. If the specified peak power option is set then you simply input the kilowatt peak rating of the panel array here and define the details below. That concludes this update training video during which I've highlighted the major changes that will affect Design Builder SBEM customers when starting to use version 4. We'd like to take this opportunity to thank you again for your custom and hope that you found this update both informative and convenient.